Man, the more research I do, the more I'm uh, not interested in all this performance and <laughs> <I> know. drugs <laughs> anymore. Yeah, see, see, yeah, you have to move away from it. exactly. Yeah. By the way, did I ever tell you that my grandmother passed from hepatocellular carcinoma specifically? No. So I have a no. some kind of genetic predisposition. She didn't drink alcohol. I mean, she was a Bedouin. Like she's never drank alcohol, didn't leave. So I have some predisposition toward HCC that I have to be, I have to be thinking of a little bit more. You know, I, I've yeah, damaged my, my liver a lot in my life. Like I've done things. Grandmother, I shouldn't be alive. My grandmother got stomach cancer. Never did anything exciting in her life. Not even never stomach even cancer. ate spices. You know, I'm wondering wow. if it's the acid reflux. But I, I, I can't remember if she had acid reflux. It's constantly irritating tissue, causing some sort of, you know, growth. So. Um, for, Unfortunately, she passed, so I can't really ask her. Um, Let's it, comment on that oh. idea that you mentioned earlier, which was this uh, kidney stone could cause like a formation around it, which could mm -hmm. cause a cancer. So yeah. I know a little bit about this because of Crohn's disease. In Crohn's disease, you can get something called a fistula, where basically yeah. you have something in your intestinal tract that then gets surrounded by tissue, and your body considers this thing an antigen. So your body continues to attack this thing. And over mm -hmm. time, this attacking damages the cells in the area of the fistula, turning them into potentially precancerous cells. And then about 10 to 15 years down the line of having a fistula, you likely develop colorectal cancer. So I had a fistula, I had a surgery for it. That was the oh, wow. complication from my Crohn's disease. When you have a fist fistulizing Crohn's disease is the most severe form. It's like really horrible. Is it, is it internal in the intestinal tract or external? Internal. So it can also cause obstruction and, and not pass you, allow you to pass food and, and uh, maybe if it was bigger, but I, mine, well, I don't think it was like that. I, I don't know how it goes in the long term, but uh, just to give some credence to that idea. So if your body is sensing some antigen constantly and attacking it, it could develop into cancers. I was surprised like, when they first told me that. It's like an autoimmune uh, disorder also, exactly. correct? Exactly. Okay. Potentially how the autoimmune dis disorders are associated with their relevant cancers, like thyroid, Hashimoto's is associated uh, with other cancers. Do you sometimes feel like a little bit cheated with this whole um, DNA that we were uh, given? Yeah, tremendously. I feel very cheated. I feel <laughs> like, you know, and then you do it like the best you can to keep yourself healthy, right? And still stuff can happen for no apparent reason. Yeah, yeah, I feel really sad for people like that lived a healthy life and then suddenly get a brain tumor in their 30s. Yeah. Or like, you know, just something out of their control. But also for some of us that didn't know how much we were harming our bodies and end up with kidney problems or things like that, you know. No, it takes decades to learn, you know, how to do things correctly. And when we start a little bit younger, like I started steroids at 26 and I thought I knew, but I, you know, a, a decade later, I know 10 times more or maybe a hundred times more. Yeah. So you always think that you have the maximum amount of information when you start making these decisions, but you know, it's progression of accumulating knowledge. And I, I'm sure in 10 years from now, I'll, you know, whatever I talk about now, I'm probably like, hmm, it could have been expanded. But at the same time, you have to consider that if we were our age, if you were 26 now, you mm -hmm. would have made this for different decisions because the fact that your channel existed, Derek's channel exists, yeah. the whole conversation about steroids has totally changed from when we- the last decade, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because so, uh, Pete, you started steroids, what, 19? 20. 20, okay. Yes. And, 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 and now you're how old? 29. Yeah. Okay, so it's been a decade also, right? Almost. Yes. So what you know now, would you make the same decisions, you know, at that, the, the age of 20, knowing what you know now? Not at all, not even close. No. But you agree, Pete, that the whole discourse has changed a bit, right? Like when we were, when you first got started, there weren't people talking about why it causes kidney damage. No, everybody would just say, it's really not that bad. Like no, you just it did yeah. it. Everybody just said it was, you know, it's not a big deal. You'll be fine. No, nothing, nobody ever dies from this. Um, and you just took them. Like I just would take whatever people told me to take or whatever I had, or it's just how it's it was. Like a nobody challenge. cared about health either back then. No, so it's almost like a challenge, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, he's taking it, I'm taking it, and then I'm going to take more. You know? <laughs> That's because exactly. Gonna, right? And and everybody would encourage each other on these uh, steroid forums, you know? And then, oh, this is my protocol, and it was the most complicated stuff ever, you know? And, and now I realize it's completely unnecessary because I got, you know, the best gains and the most simple protocols. You just have to be consistent with your diet and training, like the pros are telling you, but, you know, when you're young and... And unaware, <laughs> and you didn't go through the process yet. You're just like, yeah, whatever, they're lying. Well, it yeah, wasn't I mean, totally our fault. It was like a lot of people saying they're lying. 
It wasn't yeah. just us. So it wasn't that you heard the pros and said, oh, they're lying. It was there a bunch of people on forums saying they're lying. And then later it got even more extreme with the GH15 where they developed this concept of maybe if you mega dose things, there's a mutation and you yeah, just you can change. change your genetics. So people like myself <laughs> tried to change their genetics experimentally. And then we really harmed ourselves. But it's not just that. It's also the other element of like simple things were not discussed before. Like, for example, we thought only estradiol was a negative feedback indicator to the hypothalamus. By the way, Pete, I recently found evidence that progesterone, estradiol, and androgens are all negative feedback indicators to the hypothalamus for the production of gonadotropin releasing hormone. All three. There are response elements in the um, gonadotropin releasing hormone cells in the hypothalamus that respond to estradiol, that respond to progesterone, that respond to androgens. So it's not completely clear which of them has more of an impact, but all of them have an impact. So, for example, we didn't know that back then. No, you, know I mean? you just take, take the serums and, and you start your stare, you, you inject your testosterone inethate on Saturday and you start your PCT on Monday. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> it's one day in between. You know, nobody crazy. thought about letting their androgens decline or waiting until trimbolone or nandrolone or, you know, all these other uh, uh, synthetic progestins uh, metabolized from the body. Because a lot of guys, they do nandrolone and then they start their PCT and then these progesterone uh, derivative or uh, 19 nors are still activating the progesterone receptor in the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Mm -hmm. How do you expect to recover from that? You know, exactly. it might take another year. So that's why I told people, so listen, if you were a nandrolone or trimbolone or anything else, do a hormone replacement for a while so you can acclimatize to this feeling of true physiological amounts of testosterone, like true hormone replacement, 100 milligrams, 125 milligrams of testosterone per week. Get used to that for five months, maybe one year, and then you do your PCT. Hmm. So that complicates life further because you know, I want to get my wife pregnant tomorrow, but it's actually a two year road to get somebody pregnant. You know, if you're using progestins or that kind of stuff.